you want a taste of the Golden State, 1923 on the Disney Wish is for you. <laughs> and welcome to my channel thank you so much for watching today's video all about 1923 on the Disney Wish so 1923 is one of the restaurants within the rotational dining that you can experience when sailing with Disney Cruise Line on their ship the Disney Wish so we're gonna get into the restaurant the overall vibes we'll dive into the menu and so many other things make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel so you never miss any magical moment that we can create together here at home at the theme park or at sea which is like the best let's be real give this video a big thumbs up let's get started so when sailing on a disney cruise line ship you do have the option of your rotational dining and you're going to see a little bit of a difference and a little bit of the similarities on each of the ships. So each ship has their own three rotational dining options and most of them are different. Some of them are very similar but might not be exactly the same. On the Disney Wish, your three options are Arendelle, Marvel, and 1923. I've actually done a review on Marvel and Arendelle now and I'll leave those under the like button below on my Disney Cruise Line playlist. So make sure you go ahead and check that out after this video. We loved both of our sailings on the Disney Cruise Line. It was a magical, magical experience. And I feel like I know a lot about Disney Cruise Line now. Excited to share my opinions with you. So just because I have opinions about this restaurant, you might have a totally different opinion. And guess what? That is okay. The style of 1923 is focused around Walt Disney and Roy Disney. So right away, you will see that there are actually two sides of the 1923 restaurant there is the Roy Disney side and the Walt Disney side I have actually only been on the Roy Disney side for dinner you can walk on both sides and the theming is very very similar just the photos and those types of different things that is what's going to be a little bit different menus the same the whole vibe of the restaurant is the same it's just like the atmosphere and the little small Disney details that is what's gonna be different on both sides so 1923 as a whole is all about the taste of the Garden State. So you're going to indulge your senses with the best of California cuisine inspired by the fusion of cultural flavors found throughout the Golden State. 1923 features a diverse menu showcasing the region's unique blend of Asian, European, and South American influences. Dishes are prepared with a bounty of sunshine infused ingredients like wild honey, earthy pistachios, and glorious fresh fruits and veggies bursting with flavor. All prepared, of course, with a fine selection of wines from California's world-renowned Napa Valley. Say for 1923, the focus is the food and the menu, so you're not going to have that extra show like you are going to have at World of Marvel or Arendelle. The food is the show. That's the main aspect of your whole experience, and it is more and it is a little bit more like upscale than Arendelle or World of Marvel. So it is called 1923 because that is the year the animation studio for Walt Disney was actually started. And so 1923 is really just about embracing what Disney came to be. So you, so it's like you're getting a look inside the evolution of Disney animation from Snow White and Seven Dwarves to Frozen 2. You're going to see tons of like drawings and props and other tools that the animation um, that the animators might have needed to use and so it is really a cool experience make sure you take time after dinner or like while you're waiting for different courses to just walk around and look at the different props look at the different drawings it is so cool and it make sure that you also check outside of the restaurant because they have different stuff in display cases out there as well 1923 is one of my favorite restaurants on the Disney Wish just because of attention of detail and I was a Disney kid now I'm a Disney adult and I just love the little intricate details of the company and everything that it's grown to be and so it is really cool to be able to go back in history and just look at all of the drawings and pictures of Walt and Roy and their travels and the inspiration that they found from traveling the world and then creating these stories which it's just so cool I could go I could go on for hours but 
we won't. So one thing that's a little bit different about 1923 that I have kind of mentioned is you're going to have those two sides. So with your main seating at 545 and then your second seating at 815, you are also going to see if it says Roy or Walt. So just know that ahead of time. That's like the only thing that's really different about uh, 1923 then World of Marvel and Arendelle your table number is always going to be the same your weight staff is always going to be the same but just that little extra detail of 1923 just make sure you know which side you need to line up on when you are checking in for dinner and you can if your dinner is at 545 you should be there around 5.45, but just know that there might be a little bit of a line. So if you are a little bit late, like it's okay. They're going to make sure everyone is seated uh, before anything gets started. So just know you don't actually have to wait in line for dinner. Don't waste your time waiting in line for like 15 minutes when you could just show up at 6 and walk right on it. <laughs> dress codes for their dining like they don't have a formal night technically on the cruise you can dress up and they're like okay pick this night to dress up as formal night you don't actually have to however 1923 is one of those restaurants where people do dress up a little bit more fancy they might they might come out in their 20s outfits with their little flapper gear and that is just really fun to see. I didn't do that either time when we were traveling on the Disney Wish but I'm definitely going to do it next time because I love a good theme. Give me a reason to buy another cute outfit. I will always sign up for that. A little bit about the menu from 1923. So you have your appetizers, your salad from the kettle, you have your bread service, your entrees. They do have vegetarian options at all the restaurants, but these ones are just a little bit more called out. They have like a little bit of lighter notes as well if you don't want something as heavy. And then you also have your dessert. So again, 1923 is really focused on that menu just to make sure that the food is like really high quality and just a little bit more elevated that's what i'm looking for than arendelle or world of marvel so the thing about 1923's menu is i loved every single course which wasn't which wasn't the case for the other restaurants that we went on and again i did a review on those ones so those are linked in the description below under that disney cruise line playlist let's dive into the menu and i can tell you which ones were my favorite so for your appetizers, you have a spiced tuna option, a four cheese tortellini, which was my go-to, absolutely love this. Got it both times, the flavors were amazing. It is a little bit more of a small portion, which I actually appreciate since you have so many different options. Um, but it was very flavorful, it wasn't spicy or anything like that, packed a punch of flavor but wasn't anything too crazy that I couldn't handle. And then you have the burrata, mozzarella cheese, and like prosciutto. And then you have a duck confit, which like, no thank you. I hate duck, it's disgusting. Again, my opinion. Um, I'm sure it's good on the cruise, but like, no thank you. Uh, salad, so you have a pear salad, as well as like just a baby romaine salad from the kettle. So here, the guinea hen corn chowder. I actually had this. I was going to get the tomato soup, which is the other option. And our waiter during our first cruise was like, okay, you need to get the guinea hen. It is delicious. Just saying guinea hen is like weird to me, but holy smokes, you guys, it was bomb.com. It was just like punched you with flavor. Then our bread service was a fig and olive bread with honey butter dip. Again, I am a carb girl through and through. Give me any bread and I'll be happy. On to the entrees. So this was my favorite pasta. Holy smokes. It has the Prosecco cream pancetta. I think that's pancetta. I think that's how you pronounce it. Again, not hooked on phonics. We're just going to roll with it. Um, shallots. The Like a creamy mushroom sauce. And then like just a little bit of like a lemon holy crap i literally eat this thing in about two seconds the amount of flavors that they are able to put in this dish are just astounding i 
loved this pasta more than I love the World of Marble pasta. And this is one item that I could probably eat every single day of my life. The one thing I would say about this pasta is I would love to add scallops to it. And I probably will ask them if they can do that next time. I'm not even sure if that's a thing. But just like of the creaminess of the sauce, I feel like scallops would go great in this pasta. And then as well as the pasta that I can talk hours about, you can get a salmon, uh, some chicken, rack of lamb, or a filet mignon. This is like the place to get the filet mignon if you are wanting to order one. Our waiters, the first cruise, gave us really great recommendations. And the filet mignon was actually pretty good. The thing about Disney Cruise Line is you can order multiple meals. And the first cruise, I wanted that pasta, but then I also felt like I needed like some type of protein. And so I asked if I could just get the filet. Quote unquote didn't allow me to just get the filet. I had to order the whole like entree, which I didn't love because I didn't want like the green beans and then the potato hash that came with it. I just wanted the filet. And when I get meat, I know people have their own opinions of how they liked their filet cooked. I don't like it to be red and like runny and bloody. So I got it medium well and sister was burnt to a crisp and it was not great but Jackson really liked his I think he gets his medium I think he gets his medium yeah I think he just just gets it medium but I did not like mine but I think that's just because how it was cooked so just know that be very specific on how you want your meat cooked <laughs> Um, when you tell your waiter. Vegetarian options, you had a Buena Vista soft shell tacos. So those are like with a lot of different peppers to make it vegetarian. And then your other option was a Moroccan spiced roasted kabacha and butternut squash. I'm sure it's delicious. And then on the lighter note, um, which is like a lobster salad and then a grilled sirloin steak, roasted breast of chicken, and oven baked filet of salmon. Now that I'm rereading the menu, I've just gotten the pasta and then like the steak or the chicken on the side. Now let's chat about the dessert. So for our first cruise, it was really nice because they brought out like the most popular desserts and then Jackson and I just shared them. For my cruise with my mom, we just picked which ones we wanted. So they have churros here, which are great. So it's like with a sugar spice churro and a a dolce de leche sauce and they can also do caramel sauce as well and then you have a flourless orange almond cake which we didn't try that but then we had the apple cheesecake it is cold yeah it's cold we thought it was gonna be warm but it's cold I'm pretty sure and that was just like kind of weird but then they have the ice cream at fudge sundae mm, every Sunday was amazing and if you're just like not really sure what you want for dessert I always just go with the sundae and then this signature dessert here was my absolute fave. It is the Burbank Blueberry Lemon Bavarian Cream. So it has vanilla bean, lemon, and then dried raspberry meringue. Oh, it was just like the perfect finishing touch of an amazing meal. Overall, we were obsessed with the 1923 menu. Sometimes people will say that they don't enjoy the menus on the Disney Wish. And then my response to them is always like, okay, let's talk about what you got always make sure you're, you're reviewing the menu if you're never happy with what you've received tell your wait staff they want you to be happy they want you to enjoy your trip so you keep coming back every single time so make sure you're communicating with them if you don't enjoy something on the menu or if just something tastes off i really probably should have told them that i didn't like my steak but that's okay when comparing the rotational dining on the Disney Wish, 1923 is my absolute favorite, and then Arendelle, and then World of Marvel. So, 23 just knocks it out of the park with the menu. Enjoying every single dish is what really, like, just set us off, and it was such an amazing experience. The atmosphere was great. We loved being able to go look at all the drawings and just all the details, and then it just being a little bit more high-end was nice as well. The one thing about 1923 that some people might not like is there's no show. So like I mentioned, it's all about the menu and it's all about that full foodie experience, and so there's not going to be a show or actors or anything that's going on around you. It's really just focused on your meal. And Sometimes people want a little extra pizzazz. 
personally, again, we just enjoyed being able to chat and experience the meal together. And so that was good for us. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching my review of 1923 on the Disney Wish. Let me know in the comments down below if you've been on the Disney Wish and if you enjoyed 1923 just as much as me. I am crossing my fingers that next time we go on the Wish, we can sit on the Walt side. Honestly, if we get Roy again, I'm just going to go talk to guest relations and ask them if we can sit on the Walt side just for something new. But like I said, everything is the same, minus just the decor, and you can totally walk on both sides if you to go ahead but thank you again for watching today's video make sure you guys give this video a big thumbs up so everyone sailing on the disney wish can make sure they know what to expect before sailing on something brand new to them i know sometimes it can be hard and you're not sure what to expect so if you have any questions always feel free to leave them in the comments down below and i'm happy to assist you with that but i hope you guys have a magical rest of your day and i will see you real soon bye